had zero expectations while tuning in for the Karthik Subaraj directed film Mahan starring Vikram in the title role. Owing to the overall product that was Jagme Tandaram and Vikram's movie ventures since the past few years, I honestly did not expect to be mildly impressed. This is anyway a bad precedent to keep by the way as every movie should be given a fresh slate. On top of that, the concept in itself of the real life father son duo dishing it out against one another seemed kind of corny to me as I wasn't thoroughly convinced of Dhruv Vikram's acting ability after his debut in Aditya Vikram, a remake of Arjun Reddy. Oh, well, did my preconceived notions go for an absolute toss after finishing this movie? It's a great lesson for anyone feeling a certain way even before viewing a movie that if you're just receptive to being surprised there's nothing better than a movie proving you wrong. Mahan focuses on an individual Gandhi Mahan played by Vikram who lives by Gandhian principles and is taught and expected to live a pious and pure life. Life has other plans as his idol Mahatma Gandhi who believes in prohibition in this country eventually through many bumps and cracks along his journey becomes a leader of a syndicate that produces and supplies liquor in the state of Tamil Nadu. The transformation of Mahan from a timid and straight-edged commerce teacher to a ruthless business tycoon in the liquor business forms the basic storyline of Mahan. Even more so, the film aims to dwell deep on philosophy and ideals of humans and how they shape us as adults, laying primary focus on how this affects a father-son storyline in this movie. Here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it on Amazon Prime Video or not. The underwhelming aspects possibility of a tighter edit and often predictable the film is 2 hours and 42 minutes long and while this was essential for the film especially in its first half as it showcases the rise in power of gandhi mahan as a liquor baron in tamil nadu it is in the politics that he has to deal with as his business is thriving where the movie definitely stretches its screenplay these moments account for some hilarious back and forth especially between the characters of mahan and nyanam but after a point of time you come to terms with the rhythms of the screenplay and can easily predict what will happen next Barring probably a handful of moments you can easily make out what will transpire in the final act of the movie. This does not take away on how enjoyable the journey is as the performances of this film are spectacular. But I think the movie fails to surprise you from a gangster thriller genre point of view. Most of the targets are set and you know how characters are going to achieve them. The set pieces are absolutely exquisite and assisted brilliantly by the star cast. But this definitely falls in the category of a mass thriller done right. just that its screenplay and conclusion is quite predictable the good kartik subaraj's filmmaking i absolutely love subaraj's style of filmmaking as style is never a substitute in all his films even when it comes to a not so popular film like jagme tandaram i absolutely fell in love with the color palette and cinematography of the film the style of filmmaking becomes especially apparent as subaraj makes gandhi's character dream of a life he could have led a hilarious sequence that just gets the ball rolling Subaraj also through his films loves to connect one's roots to their present circumstances with great detail and the case of characters reuniting years later in this film account for some of the most hilarious scenes Subaraj and his love for Rajnikanth does not end with this film as well whether it be the swag he showcased in Annamalai or even the business idea thought of leading to his financial success the characters in a Subaraj film taking inspiration from Talaiva never seems to get out of his fictional universe i'm all for it His great balance of comedy infused in an extremely intense thriller genre really has made me a fan of his style of filmmaking. Action sequences. There is no denying that Vikram has to be one of the most unique actors of this country and by that I mean is that irrespective of his age the man seems to give everything to his roles. Even if the surroundings of the character may not shape up to make a cohesive or enjoyable film, the dedication of the actor is unquestionable. At the age of 55 the man gives everything to this role, especially the action sequences composed by Dinesh Subaraian. The mass moments that lead to the biggest altercation in this film transitions to a long one-shot action sequence executed by Vikram himself and it will make your jaw drop. An extremely skilled combination of camera work and choreography that carries on throughout the film as Vikram even at the age of 55 seems to have the same energy as his son. Some of the duel scenes that I really can't talk about account for great moments of combat in this movie. Santosh Narayanan This man has to be one of the most unique and talented music directors of the country. The distinct use of local sounds and integrating international themes to the same account for this beautiful synergy and mix of cultures that Santosh Narayanan just seems to produce movie after movie. The Mahan soundtrack is very unique as it integrates different languages, sounds and themes that you can't really point a finger to which piece of work it sounds similar to. 
whether it be a rap like Missing Me or Suryatam, which is a trance-like piece, these songs account for some of the most memorable set pieces from the movie, making me feel that Santosh Narayanan just has a way to become an integral part of a film storyline rather than just being an artist lending his services. There is something about his work where you just can't separate the story from the songs contributed by the maestro. Supporting cast and mass moments. The performances of this film cannot be faulted at all, each individual lending a distinct tone to the world never coming across as over the top even in their hilarious antics. Bobby Simha as Satyavan, Gandhi's best friend who assists him to go up the ranks in the liquor business is exceptional in this film. His transformation from a self-centered businessman to a man whose faith makes him aware of his blessings shapes up as a very mature and convincing performance in this movie. Watch out for the beautiful scene that he shares with Gandhi as they confront one another on their roles as fathers. He absolutely hits it out of the park. Vertai Muthukumar as Nyanam brings the much-needed nastiness to this world. This is a performance that could have easily transformed into becoming caricaturish, but the actor just brings the right balance to eventually come across as an evil dimwit. Simran as Nachi, Gandhi's wife, and Sanat as Rocky also assist the film brilliantly. The interval moment in this film has to account for one of the best stage sequences that would have made the theatre absolutely erupt. I still think this is an opportunity lost in theatres, where fans would have seen Vikram the way they always knew him. Politics and the father-son duo. The film aims to shed light on individuals and their thought processes of philosophy and what dictates their life. This path that often leads to people disregarding how others live their lives account for various confrontational scenes as these beliefs often dictate characters to go on a path of self-sabotage. None of the characters can be considered to be the ones you should root for as everyone in this film is problematic in some way or the other, making it as a viewer even more interesting on who you will connect with more. Vikram has always been considered to be a dynamic actor. From his heartbreaking performance in Setu to his impressive act in Anyan, the man seemed to have lost his mojo in the last few years, being a part of mind-numbing commercial projects, but I can wholeheartedly say that this is Vikram's best performance by a mile in recent years, something that his fans always wish to see from him since years, and Sobaraj has executed what many Tamil directors were capable to do with stars in the last one or two years, and that is to bring the best out of them. Be it Doctor, Manadu, or Surarai Potru, directors have churned out the best work from actors who have been in a creative slump of sorts, and it is beautiful to see. I was absolutely surprised by Dhruv Vikram and his performance in this movie, making me think that if this was his debut, he would have caused such waves in the country. He brings the much-needed oomph and intensity on screen and has matured just with one film in his kitty to show off the potential he may showcase if cast in any other story. While Mahan may be predictable in its screenplay, it accounts for a very intense and enjoyable gangster thriller that brings back both Karthik Subaraj and Vikram back in form, reinstating our faith in them as creators and talent. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about Mahan. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the handle is right in front of you, follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.